if I wanted to, move down. So if I look at my original flag, which is right here, and I notice that this time my flag moved down. How far did it move down? Well, take a look at the Y values and see what happens. If I'm looking at my Y values, my original C value was 6. My new C value is 2. That means I went down 4 units, which you can see is what's being affected in the Y part of the rule, that my X and Y coordinates turned into keep the X the way it was, but take 4 off of every Y value, and you'll be able to draw your new figure. So that's why you see x, y, arrow, x, comma, y minus 4, because we are taking 4 units off every y value. Likewise, if I wanted to, in the y direction, move up, I can do that as well. So here's my original red flag again. And what we can see is that my original flag moved up a certain number of units. The way that we can figure out how many units is we can look at the y values because that's the up and down motion in a coordinate. And so if I look at my 2d values, the original red flag d of 6 and the new d flag of 9, I know that I went up 3 units. And I can see that evidenced in the rule because we see that the y gets a plus 3 in every case scenario. So as I look at the orange highlight of my rule, it says that every x and y coordinate turns into an x comma y plus 3. That's because every y value is having 3 added to it. Kind of the cool thing is, after learning those four different pieces, we could do a combo. So here I see my original red flag. And this original red flag, what I notice is two things happen. First of all, my original flag had moved up a certain distance, and if I want to look at that, I can look at the y value. So I notice that my d went from a 6 in the y to a 9 in the y, so I know that I went up 3 units. But also what I noticed is that my flag moved to the left. It went left, and if I want to find out how many units, I can look at the x values. And I noticed, like, for example, that my C X value went from 2 to negative 4, which means that I went to the left 6 units. And we can see this evidenced, again, in the rule, where the X gets minus 6, and we see that the Y had a plus 3. This is a combination translation. It went both to the left 6 and up Three. So x, y turns into x minus 6, y plus 3. The last group of things that we're going to talk about are reflections. And in this first reflection, we're going to be looking at a reflection over the x-axis. So I see my original flag in red. And what I noticed is that there was a mirror along the x-axis, and that the new flag that I see down below the mirror has been reflected over the x-axis. They tell us that the rule for this is that we keep the x but change the sign of the y. So as I look at what's going on, I pick one particular point, doesn't really matter which one, let's say I pick the d coordinate, and I notice that its y value was 6. But now the new dy value is negative 6, and what I notice is that it changed the sign. So I went from the original coordinates of 5, 6 for my flag originally to keep your x value of 5, but change the y value to the opposite of what you saw before, which in this case then would mean it's negative 6. So that's a reflection over the x-axis. x, y turns into x opposite y. In our next reflection, this time, we're going to take our original red flag and we're going to reflect it over the y-axis. So as I reflect it over the y-axis here, highlighted in these red dashed lines, what I noticed 
is that my rule tells me that my x and y change to the opposite of x and keep the y. For example, still continuing to look at that d coordinate, I see that my original d x value is positive 5, but when I reflect it over the y axis, it turns into a negative 5. Or in other words, my original coordinates of 5, 6 turn into the coordinates of the opposite of 5, comma, 6. So up in the rule part, we see that x, y for any reflection over the y-axis becomes the opposite of x and then the y. In this next rule, what we see is we see a reflection over the line y equals x. This line is the line that goes diagonally like this. And if we take a look at our original flag again in red, and we pick any particular coordinate to see what's going on, uh, let's say I pick the coordinate for d, and the d coordinate was 5, 7 originally. Let's look at what happened to the new d coordinate. Oh, interesting. The spots flip-flopped. Or in other words, I took my original 5 and 7 coordinates for my flag, and now the new coordinates, you just switch the x and the y, so now the y comes first and the x comes second compared to the original. So instead of 5, 7, we have 7, negative 5. And this is what happens when you reflect something over the y equals x line. Or in other words, the y equals the x, and the x equals the y. And so that's the rule for reflecting over the line y equals x. Now as I do each one of these examples, it's probably in your best interest to kind of just keep looking at these coordinates and see how they all switch to kind of solidify your understanding. In this next example, very similar to the previous one, we're going to reflect over another diagonal line, but this time it's diagonal the other way. So in this green dashed line, this is how I'm going to be reflecting. And so my original red flag is here. And you'll notice that when you see the coordinates um, of what happened after you reflected, uh, if I take the C coordinate of 2, 7, and I go to the new C coordinate, I see that I have negative 7, negative 2. So not only did my X and Y switch position, but they also changed signs. So in other words, my 2, 7 that I had in the original red flag turned into switch the spots, so now 7, 2, and switch the signs, so now negative 7 and negative 2. And so every single time that you're reflecting over the line y equals the opposite of x, then what you're going to do is you're going to have your x and y coordinate turn into the opposite of y and the opposite of x in that order. In this particular slide, I put a summary of all of the rules. So we talked about reflections uh, just now. And you'll see that when you're reflecting over the x-axis, your x and y turn into x and the opposite of y. We reflect it over the y-axis. And so you'll notice that your x and y turn into the opposite of x and y. We reflect it over y equals x, which means that your x and y turn into yx. And we reflect it over y equals opposite of x, which means that your x and y turn into opposite y, opposite x. We also talked about rotations. And when you're rotating 90 degrees clockwise, or in other words, 270 counter, your x and y turn into y opposite of x. When you're rotating 270 clockwise, or in other words, 90 counterclockwise, your x and y turn into opposite y, x. And if you rotate 180 either way, your x and y turn into opposite y, opposite x. And then the last rules down below here were our translations. If you're moving in the x direction, what you'll notice is that your x and y become x, and you can either plus or minus off a number, keep the y. And if you're translating in the y direction, your x and y become x, and then y plus or minus a number.